Welcome to part two about menopause. Put the video on hold for a minute so that you can enjoy the little cartoons that I have posted. Trust me, I can relate to many of these. So the focus of this lecture is the long-term side effect osteoporosis. So what's the problem with a little bone loss? Well, it's a huge problem. Two million fractures occur annually. 80% of hip fractures occur in older women. And this isn't due to a fall. This is brittle bones standing up and all of a sudden they're on the ground. One in two women over age 50 will fracture due to osteoporosis. That is going to be huge in our nursing practice. When you think about our skilled nursing facilities, they're going to be full of women with hip fractures. And my thing that I've always told my students is the unfortunate thing about hip fractures in older people is they're usually dead within a year. So let's see if we can do something to prevent it. $17 billion is spent annually to treat the morbidity and mortality associated with osteoporosis in this country. So this diagram shows how we gain bone and lose bone. And so for most of you in your 20s and your 30s, you should be focusing on calcium. Build up your bones so that they're going to last you through your lifetime. We're going to live to be 100, so you want to be proactive. And you should tell your friends. And one of the things I highly recommend that you stop doing is drinking soda because it leaches the calcium out of your bones. Switch to a latte. Skinny latte, you're getting your calcium and very little calories. And for the males in our audience, look, you are not immune to osteoporosis. You're going to get there, but you're not going to get there as fast as women. So risk factors, Caucasian or Asian ethnicity, European ancestry, especially Northern European ancestry, Women who are small boned, women who have a family history, women who go through a late menarche and early menopause, because remember, the estrogen helps support bone density, having a sedentary lifestyle. Of course, age and gender, those are the factors we cannot change. So as you age, you're going to lose bone, and if you're a woman, you're going to lose it more than men. And then additional risk factors include how much alcohol you drink, smoking, excessively drinking caffeine, and then the use of steroids. My rheumatologist told me that just one course of steroids can wipe out one year's worth of taking calcium. Think about our asthmatic patients that need to do steroid bursts so that they can breathe they are going to be a candidate for osteoporosis. The other thing is the insufficient intake of calcium and vitamin D prior to age 30. We diagnose osteoporosis via bone density. It's a very easy test. It takes about 10 minutes and it's completely painless. There's no prep for it other than uh, they, some will ask the patient not to take calcium a couple of days before they do the test. They lay on a table, fully closed, clothed, and um, they get this test. The results are plotted on a graph, and you can see on the picture on the left, you want to be in that darker green section. When you get down into the orange and the red, that's the fracture level. We tend to do bone densities every two years beginning at the age of 65, unless there are risk factors involved. If there's a family history, if a woman starts fracturing easily, uh, we're going to start doing a bone density and malabsorption conditions. I put this in here because bariatric surgery is one, one of the most common elective surgeries in America. And I think about 70% of them are the malabsorption type surgeries. Well, they are malabsorbing their calcium and their vitamin D, and so this population is at high risk. Think about those babies you took care of who had short gut syndrome. 
they are also going to be at risk for osteoporosis at an early age. So what we need to do is try and prevent osteoporosis as much as we can and treat it early. So we treat it by intake of calcium, vitamin D, weight-bearing exercise. Now the weight-bearing when you're walking and running is good for your hips and your, but not your spine. What you need to do is do weight-bearing for the upper extremities as well. We want to prevent falls, and so this is where you educate women to be careful with throw rugs when they're taking care of grandchildren that they don't have the little toys on the floor and have everything well lit, even at night, use night lights. Weight gain. Stop smoking. So maintain a healthy weight. Don't smoke. And then we need the calcium, and there's here are a few things that a woman can take and they need between 12 and 1500 milligrams of calcium every day. Ladies in my audience, you need to have at least 1200 milligrams of calcium every day. And so look at this list, try and get it in your foods. Your food sources are far better than any product that they make in pill form. So we have a variety of treatment options. We have the bisphosphonates, so Fosamax, Actinella, and Beneva. And then those are the oral, and then we have Reclast, which is an IV. Uh, with the bisphosphonates, if you recall your pharmacology regarding these, they have to be taken on an empty stomach first thing in the morning, and the patient cannot lay down for at least an hour afterwards. And so when you have to administer in the, this in the hospital, if the patient can't sit up on her own, you need to elevate the head of the bed. So Fosamax and Actinel are taken once a week. Beneva is taken once a month. We have our partial estrogen agonist and antagonist, and this is raloxifene. We have denosumab, which is prolia. And what this is, is a biologic therapy. It produces an antibody that inactivates the body's breakdown mechanism, the bone me breakdown mechanism. So the osteoclast is what this is trying to hit. This is a subcutaneous injection that's administered every six months. And the biggest side effect is low back pain. It usually happens after the first injection and much less afterwards. And then we can also give a parathyroid hormone. So the whole aim of treatment is to reduce bone reabsorption and balance the osteoclastic activity versus the osteoblastic activity. So the bisphosphonates have been purported to give the bone the osteoblastic activity to increase it and reduce the osteoclastic activity. So when you look at that picture on the right, that's my osteoporotic right, right arm where it crumbled into eight pieces with a bike accident. And that's the hardware I'm walking around with. Then the one on the bottom right, that's me when I was about 17. So what are the recommendations? The IOM put out their guidelines, 1,300 milligrams they say units, but it's really milligrams of calcium between the ages of 9 and 18. Then 1,000 units a day, uh, age 19 to 50, and 1,200 for women over 50. And then the vitamin D guidelines have actually changed. For as long as I can remember, it was 400 units of vitamin D for everybody in the population. But now they have increased it to 600 units for most people. And then after age 70, we're going from 600 up to 800. So I screen patients for vitamin D. Uh, women and men who are obese have very low vitamin D levels. So these patients, when you encounter them, they, they might be taking 50,000 units. If they have severe malabsorption, they can be taking that three times a day. But for the most part, we can manage them with just once a week. So this ends the lecture on menopause part two.